What's up guys, welcome back to our third installment of Making Money in the Outdoor Industry. Today's topic is going to be on turning a profit on a small tract of land. Now everything discussed in this video will be based on uh, our rules and regulations here in Texas because that's where I live and that is what I'm familiar with. But we will jump right into it and get started. I have three options for you guys. And um, I feel that one of them is the most viable option, but the other two um, have proven in the past to work good as well. So here we go. Now, keep in mind while I'm discussing this that I'm talking, we're basing this whole um, scenario off of a track of land around 200 acres for Texas. That's a pretty small track of land when it comes to trying to do something in the hunting industry. Um, and so we will base this on a track of land um, that is around the size of 200 acres. All right, option one would be the um, probably the most familiar with everybody or the most popular, and that would be the um, small hunting operation. <clears throat> this is more of a <clears throat> put-and-take type scenario. Uh, you see a lot of this um, in the bow hunting side of our industry. Um, guys like Maurice Chambers um, with the old school Chambers bow hunting kind of made this popular back in the day. But anyways, it is a mo most of the time it is a high fence hunting operation. A couple hundred acres, maybe more, maybe less. Um, you're doing a per day price. You know, um, used to they were like two hundred dollars a day. Now I think they're anywhere from three to four hundred dollars a day. Um, and you're giving guys an option to shoot. You know, one of five species: Axis, Black Buck, Psyca, Mouflon, something like that. Um, and it's not a guaranteed hunt. They're just paying a daily rate trying to get one. Um, this can work in both ways, good and bad. Um, the good side of it um, for um, the hunter would be if they were able to connect, then they would get an animal way below market value price. So you would end up you would end up spending a lot less money to harvest a trophy animal as the client or as the hunter, um, as opposed to going out and trying to uh, to get one on um, some of the other ranches. Um, that can also be a negative to the landowner um, because if his clients are very successful, then he is um, not able to replace the animals at the rate that he is selling the animals um, or for the price that he's selling the animals. So in theory, this is more of a lottery system, I guess you would say. Um, and I'm definitely not trying to step on anybody's toes by saying this. I'm just speaking out of honesty or, or what I'm pulling out of my own head. But numbers wise, that's how it works out. So basically, you know, if, if you're doing it on a two day hunt at $300 a day, that's $600. Well, we all know you're not going to go replace a nice axis buck for $600. Um, matter of fact, you're going to be kind of three times that. And then just to get your profit margin, you're going to need to be, you know, around four times that, um, maybe even five times that. So um, what you're looking at on an operation like that um, to be profitable is that you're going to need one out of every four to five hunters to be successful. Now that does two things. One, um, it it kind of makes it hard um, for people to, to to look at your operation and um, and say, you know, that's a I've only got a twenty percent chance while I'm going out there. I'm paying for this. I'm probably not going to get one. Maybe I should just save up my money and do something else. So that's one group of people that you have to deal with. The second thing that it does that sometimes does make this profitable, and we've seen this in the past, um, especially if you were to try to call and book one of those places, is that there are a lot of people that that fits their price range, that fits their budget. Um, they also feel that they're good enough hunters to go out there and be successful. Um, maybe they just want to take a chance, or maybe deep down they do feel that I'm, I'm probably better than you know the other 80% that go out there, and so therefore I'll be in the 20% that's successful. Um, and a lot of times you call these people or, or you look on, um, you look online, some of them have booking calendars, like first point bow hunting, uh, used to have a booking calendar. I don't know if they still do, but you look on there and you see that there's sometimes a year where there's 15 to 20 guys a day out there on those places and you can't call and get a date. So from your standpoint, if you have that kind of volume that you're doing and your success rates stay around that 20% point, then yes, it can be profitable. Um, but if you do not have them, the volume or, or if you have um, hunters that are coming out there and being very successful over the 20% max, you know, you're getting 40, 50, 60% of guys that are, that are having success rates out there on your property, um, then that would not be a viable, profitable method um, for a, to, 
to turn profit on a small um, a small ranch or small acreage acreage in our in our hunting industry. Matter of fact, you would end up losing big time. The second method on um, or the second thing you could do to make a small track of land profitable would be <clears throat> the um, put and take system at a rate that's not a guess. You know what I mean? So almost like a guaranteed type put and take system. Um, guys um, like Thompson Temple have made this very, very popular in the sheep world. Um, a buddy of mine, Brady Bauer with uh, Los Robles Ranch has, has been very successful at this uh, on the big game world. Um, and so Along these lines, you've kind of got a, um, you know, a couple hundred acres. You've got a nice place for them to stay. You have really good quality animals um, at a price point that people want. And so you can kind of match that. Um, all it takes in this realm or this um, position of the second way to do this on small small acreage is to have the marketing capabilities or the um, clientele list to be able to continuously bring those people back. And so basically in this scenario, um, you're looking at, um, like I said, a put and take situation where you have a group of clients that want X type species, you probably already have. And both of those guys I mentioned, they run great operations and they have good animals out there on their ranch, um, to begin with. So it's not like they have nothing and bring something in, but at the same time, you have the ability to have a custom fit for your clients. Um, so if, if Jim's one of your best clients and he calls and he says, Hey, uh, Joe, I would like, you know, I really want to shoot a white tail of this size or an axis of this size or a black buck of this size and you don't have it you have the ability to go buy that uh bring that animal in um you know wait however many days you need to wait or have it in a certain amount of time before he gets there and then perform the hunt at that point um with you know an obvious just like retail to, or wholesale to retail um price point in there that allows you to make a good profit you repeat that process over and over again um and and you're able to um, to make a profit off a small track of land in the hunting business. It's not something that you have to have these giant sustainable herds that you're really having to manage your numbers. Um, a lot of that doesn't come into the equation when you're trying to do something like that. You know you have contacts with, with either breeders or brokers or trappers, and you have the ability to go get animals, bring animals back to your property, and um, produce the quality that is needed in order to run the hunts for the clientele that you already have. So in this situation, it's very, very possible to um, earn a good living or, ma or make a profit off of a small track of land. Um, most important thing is, or the two most important things are to have the marketing ability or the pre-existing clientele list uh, to continue bringing business onto your property and to have um, a good set of breeders, brokers, or trappers that you do business with that allows you to get good quality animals in in a timely manner um, that you need them to be able to perform these hunts. So part two, doing the put and take operation with quality animals, um, more of a guaranteed style. It is very possible to do that. Um, especially if you already have a, you definitely are going to want a place that's, you know, obviously high fence because there's a lot of stuff that needs to be um, high fence to allow those type of animals that your clientele are going to want to come out there. That way you're not turning something loose and automatically losing your money. But you guys probably already know that. Um, so anyways, guaranteed put and take, small track of property, nice little lodge for the guys to be on there, good clientele list, and that is a uh, my second option for uh, a viable way to turn profit on a small piece of property. My third option on uh, making a small piece of property a viable, profitable venture is probably, this is probably my favorite option, um, and it is the raising of animals. So it's it's easy to see nowadays, especially as wide open as the internet is and, and as much information as you can grab on the price difference in retail to wholesale or age range on these animals that are um, that are being hunted. And so there is some negativity that comes in our industry from hunting on small tracts of land, right? So there's a lot of guys that will bash those guys who, um, they have no reason to, but guys that go out, you know, purchase a piece of property themselves, a high fence piece of property, whatever it is, it's small acreage, they're doing things right, but they're still gonna catch a lot of flack because they're hunting high fence, small acreage. Okay, so that's something you have to deal with on that on that end of it. The reason why I like this um, uh, raising animals more is that you don't really have to deal with that. You can stay behind the scenes. You can be quiet, and there is a bunch of profit to be made in this. So um, you can do it on any species. You know, you see a lot of whitetail breeders. Um, there's there's breeders for every species. Um, 
Brian Gilroy and Wildlife Partners is, and he's not small acreage, he has some large tracks that they do a lot of business on, but they've proven that this method of raising animals is very viable and there is a ton of profit to be made in it. Um, me personally, I'm an Axis guy, I'm just in love with Axis deer, um, and I think you can find that if you had a couple hundred acres or even smaller, you can do this um, number or this method on a lot smaller tracks than a couple hundred acres. If you have a fenced in area that's that's just a small acres, 200 acres or less, um, you can take access deer, right? And you can look at the market right now and spikes themselves are going for about four to five hundred dollars a piece to buy a spike access buck. Well, within a couple years, let's say a three year old, when they're close to that 30 inch range, um, you can sell them all day long at $1,500 a piece. So you've got a 300% markup pretty much on your animal, um, and all you're having to do is provide you know, food, water, and, and shelter, um, which is pretty easy to do. If, if you have the money to go out and buy a couple hundred acres, you have the money to provide food, water, and shelter. Um, and so that's kind of a um, more of a guaranteed way to, to see a good return on your investment. Now, there is some stipulations you're gonna you know what i mean you can't turn them out there and just turn a blind eye to them and hope they survive you do have to have some animal husbandry um about yourself and and take care of the animals just like you would take care of any other animal uh, but if you're willing to do that that is a great option because um the market is absolutely flooded with people looking to buy um species such as axis deer right now and if you have quality bucks um, there is absolutely no problem with you sell them. You will have people beating down your door to buy them, people beating down your door to trap them. Everybody's going to want in there. I, I guarantee you just by posting pictures of what you have on your property, you'll have people beating down your door to try to come to your, to your um, breeding or raising operation and try to shoot them. Um, so there's, that's a very, very good viable way to turn a profit on small acreage. Um, and that is the type of, um, type of business model also that you can take, um, to a bank or, or somebody that's trying to finance you or an investor to try to help you out. Um, and that's a lot safer play is the raising animals. Sometimes, um, some people kind of turn a blind eye to, um, if you say you've got this small track and you're trying to raise them up in your business model or that people are going to come in and shoot them. Um, sometimes that gets a bad rap, but if you're saying that you're going to raise them basically like cattle and you're trying to build up a, build up a herd and then you will sell them off to, who knows where and who cares where when it comes down to that point because nothing bad's happening on your place, um, then in all reality, um, it's just the world we live in and people are more uh, inept to, to help you out or, or to try to you know figure out a way to finance that business idea. So that's my number one option or my number one um, whatever in this how to turn a profit on small acreage is, like I said, my favorite's access. You do whatever you want. There's many you know, plausible species to work with out there, but on the access level, buying, buying and raising these animals for four to $500 a piece. And, and within three years, they're worth $1,500. A lot of them even more depending on how they grow. Um, you can take that business model and you can buy that same number every single year. Um, and, and you can, you know, turn that into something really good. You can also get into, um, you know, like if you've done it, if you've done it every, every three years, if you do it every single year after the third year, I guess is what I'm trying to say is that every year you will have a profitable herd that are coming off the ranch every single year after that. But if you can also go into the breeding aspect where you do have some does and you, and you do that also, and that's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, for me personally, um, that's just another step that I have to put into it. So as long as there's people out there that are willing to sell spikes for $450 and I don't have to worry about breeding and fighting and all that kind of stuff on my land, um, then I can take those good chunks of spikes. I can grow those spikes into, into good shooter bucks or stalker bucks, and I can get rid of them and, and move on to the next group without having to worry about an influx of, of does or, or, you know, overproducing one side or the other, and then having to deal with that. So spikes, to three-year-olds, to 300% profit. It's a great way to be profitable on a small track of land. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope I answered the question. That was a great question, by the way. I can't remember exactly who asked me that. Um, that came off of Facebook. But this is part three. We've got, oh, probably 12 parts of this left of questions that I have to answer. Some are repetitive, so we might skip over a few of them. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have a question or something that you would like us to discuss, like I said last time, I don't know everything. I just know what's worked for me in the past and what's helped our business um, or me personally become successful in this industry and be able to make a living um, doing what I love uh, without 
putting my family in a bind by by being gone just messing with a hobby all the time um and i would love to share that with you guys and i and i sure hope that um you know it, it helps somebody down the road so if you got something you want to discuss let's talk about it until then i'll see you guys on the next one